So, uh, first of all, I think the industry is very excited about the opportunities that are going to be afforded by 5G, so not a question that uh, we're looking forward to working with the government because I think it's also a sovereign imperative for the country and the importance of the country to be seen up there competing with the rest of the global players. So that goes without saying. The point is the substantial investments that will be required to take our country from where we are in a predominantly maybe 2G, 4G type of an environment to a 5G environment requires uh, investments that have been estimated by the government at about 100 billion US dollars. So in order to achieve that, the financial health of the industry has to be improved because you can't go to the banks and get a loan or you can't go to the international market and attract the funds without being able to improve the health of the industry to be able to repay and to sustain the type of debt and the payment. So I think that is the most important thing that both the industry and the government has to work towards in order to get 5G a reality. Uh, so a couple of things. Uh, affordable pricing of the spectrum. Uh, there can be various uh, debates as to what that is, but very clearly uh, the present pricing is not appropriate and sustainable as far as the industry is concerned. Secondly, clean spectrum because now there appears to be all types of contention among various government agencies, the space agencies, the satellite folks, and so therefore increasingly what we are seeing in India is what we call the balkanization of the spectrum, be it the 3.3 to 3.5 that is being offered in the present proposed auctions. When we look at 26, we're finding the same problems. Globally, when everybody is looking at 28 to be added to what we call the mobility band of spectrum, we are finding that we are locked out of that because of uh, the use by the satellite uh, industry. So clean spectrum at adequate spectrum bands is appropriate because when we are going forward, no longer is 10 megahertz or 25 megahertz of contiguous spectrum adequate for 5G, we are looking at a minimum of 100 megahertz of contiguous spectrum. So from a pricing perspective, when you have this volume, you can see that the per megahertz pricing has to come down. And secondly, it has to be clean spectrum, otherwise you're not going to be able to get the type of quality that the customer will demand. I don't think there's any one country that is going to give us a complete model. I think different countries uh, do provide different insights into the model. The American model, which is a very enterprise, free market driven uh, model, clearly has uh, issues that uh, can be helpful. But I think in India, we have to look at what we call the social dimensions of how we're going to use 5G. So not only does 5G have to be economical in terms of the acquisition and the investment, it has to be able to meet the type of consumer demand that's coming, both from the B2C and from the B2B side. And it has to be profitable for the folks who are providing the service. So those three component pieces must fit together. Now, what the government of India has done in terms of India saying is that given what we have in our population and the contours of our population, they've highlighted five or six things which must be unique to the Indian experience of 5G. So we must look at agriculture. 60 plus percent of our economy is agriculture based. Education is important if you have to be globally competitive. So we've got to focus on that. Traffic management is an important issue. Waste management is another important issue. Uh, smart cities are an important issue and uh, so we need to look at these factors and put them into the mix in terms of the focus for 5G and uh, that is something that the industry is keen to look at, work with the government and ensure that the affordability factor in terms of the inputs which is spectrum marries with that societal and social impetus that the country is looking for. I'm not sure that there is a significant delay, uh, delay, if you will. Um, different countries, uh, obviously because of the speed with which they've been able to roll out 4G and the readiness of their networks in terms of 4G are much more quicker in terms of adopting to the next generation, which is 5G. We've had the um, sort of uh, burden, if you will, of moving from 2G to 3G and now to 4G and from 4G moving over to 5G. So that uh, sort of vector that we are trans going through, right, transcribing, if you will, 
uh, requires a certain amount of individuality as far as the country is concerned. So I think it's more important to be ready as far as the country is concerned. Look to best practices that are emerging elsewhere and at the end of the day make sure that we are providing value for the consumer both from the B2C and the B2B and make sure that we're doing it in an affordable way because I think the important thing that the area countries are looking, the South Asia countries are looking for, is the particular approach that India is going to take. And so we can be a lead leader in looking at affordable uh, rollout of services, the type of applications that are socially oriented, looking at the type of dynamics where we in India operated in a very, very sparse uh, environment. All right? Those are some of the things that I think we can show the country in terms of going forward and saying, look, we can be a model in our own unique way for the rest of our region. So I think one of the things that everybody is talking about is this new concept of you know, a sliced network. And so I think we're looking at a totally different paradigm in terms of the way we structure our present networks. Uh, a lot more integrated, a lot more monolithic. I think we're moving into a space where it's going to be much more distributed, moving closer to the end user. Cloud computing is going to be an issue. Obviously, the densification of all of these types of I issues come up. Uh, open source technology is becoming another important characteristic, if you will. And so there are multiple dynamics. And so I think one of the things that we have to recognize in answering this question is that we are no longer in a continuum where we can look at the past and say we can predict the future with any great certainty. I think we are in a discontinuous phase of massive disruptions as a result of what 5G is going to bring about. So the very notion that we are going to go beyond connecting people to connecting things and all kinds of things already will introduce dynamics. Now, if I were to say what is the business model that emerges, I think one is, thing is very clear. We have to focus more and more in terms of the enterprise section. And the enterprise sale is going to be very, very different. It is going to be more of a solution sale. It is more of an integrated sale. Obviously, high reliability is going to be a factor. Innovation is going to be a characteristic because enterprises will move much faster. So we have to learn to not only serve the B2C side, but increasingly the B2B side. And I think that's going to be a opportunity for operators to increase their ARPU. So we'll have to look at that as the new component of our business models. Uh, so I think first and foremost, uh, what we've asked for the government is that please get rid of this uh, anomaly in the Indian levy structure. So previously, we used to have revenue share, we used to have license fees and spectrum usage charge, and spectrum was paid as, on an as-you-go basis. Um, in 2011 and so on, after the Supreme Court came through with its order, Auctions was the only way forward. Now, what has happened is that uh, now a substantial amount of money is taken out of our pockets, if you will, for acquiring Spectrum. No longer it's pay as you go. Therefore, the old pay as you go model should have been done away with. But we now live in the worst of all places where you have the upfront payment plus extracting almost 30% in terms of a continuous pay as you go from our top line. So I think that has to be changed. And I think uh, the DOT in our uh, conversations have indicated that they support that. Hopefully the finance ministry will support that. So financial health of the present industry, absolutely essential. The second thing that we have to look at is affordable spectrum. All right, because this is the building block. This is, if you will, the cement that is needed for our industry. That has to come at affordable prices through an auction process that needs to be looked at. The third is the right of way. Uh, we will be looking at densification of our networks. We are looking at hundreds of new cell towers. Cell towers that are lower, all right, are very different from what you see today. And we will require a lot of participation at the state level, because obviously this is where it happens. Unfortunately, today, we get a lot of friction in terms of being able to acquire sites, put up sites, get the permissions in an appropriate way. And the prices that are charged for laying fiber and for building towers are not, again, sustainable. So I think we've got to get alignment around right away. I think if we we address these significant things, I think we will go forward. Of course, as far as the sovereign interests are concerned, making sure that uh, issues like security are addressed, the new, uh, you know, uh, personal uh, privacy plan or the uh, act is going to come. We've got to take a very close look at that to see how we integrate that, secure the interests of the consumer. I think that's going to be an emerging area that we're going to look at in terms of security issues and the whole issue of what it means to make in India in terms of leveraging that part of the government's uh, uh, program. 
One of the things that uh, has already been given to us is saying, how are you going to connect all the 25,000 villages that are presently unconnected? Minister turned to us and said, karna hai. So, karna hai. <laughs>